Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Now let's take a look at the different types of blood vessels we have in our body. So what I've drawn up down the bottom is we have the larger blood vessels that are coming from the heart that we term arteries, okay? So remember, here's the left-hand side of the heart. The important thing about the left-hand side of the heart is that it's delivering blood to the body. So this is where blood gets ejected from the heart through the aorta and then you can see it gets distributed to all these various parts, tissues. This includes the coronary arteries, the brain, the gut, the renal system, the muscles and the skin, plus other areas of the body. And that means that the large vessels that exit the left-hand side of the heart are under high amounts of pressure because that left ventricle contracts really, really hard. In actual fact, the strongest pressure coming out of that left ventricle is 120 millimeters of mercury. That's quite a strong con contraction. In actual fact, if we were to measure that not in mercury, but measure that in water, it would be around about three meters of water. That means if that left ventricle contracted under its highest pressure, it could squirt water around about three meters out. All right, now this is an artery right here. And arteries, what you need to know about arteries, are comprised of elastic tissue. Really important point, elastic tissue. Why? Because when it's under high pressure, it needs to stretch. And the important part about stretching is that it recalls, snaps back into place. So that means that arteries are filled with elastic tissue and they are compliant. Really important point. As you get older, sometimes they can harden, stiffen, and they become less compliant, which means they don't stretch very well under high pressures, which means they're more likely to be damaged under high pressures. Hence why people as they get older can have stiffened arteries, but also increase the likelihood of damage to those arteries, forming atherosclerosis, and that can lead to a plaque being built up, and that plaque can detach, a thrombus can form, and now that's a clot that can potentially travel to the brain, stroke, the heart, heart attack, okay? So, arteries, compliant, elastic tissue. As we move from arteries, they branch off into these multiple smaller blood vessels called arterioles. Now, these arterioles, as you can see here, they lead into capillary beds. But an important point about arterioles are they have heaps amount of, is it elastic tissue? No, it's smooth muscle. They have huge amounts of smooth muscle surrounding them. Now, why is this important? It's important because you can tell muscle to contract. And if you've got muscle surrounding a tube and you tell that muscle to contract, it narrows the hollow inside of that tube. Now think about it, blood's moving through here. If it wants to go, let's say, to the gut, but the muscles constrict and limit the amount of blood going in, it means the blood backs up, backs up, backs up. If you do that to multiple areas of the body, you're gonna increase the amount of blood in the systemic circulation and increase the pressure. Just like having a hose and putting your thumb on the end of the hose, the pressure increases, right? And so what that does is it increases the pressure. So arterioles have lots of smooth muscle and this makes them resistance vessels. I said arteries have elastic tissue, they're compliant. You've got arterioles have smooth muscle and they are resistance vessels. They can play around with blood pressure. Now what we have right in the middle here are the capillary beds. Now this is the site of exchange. We're exchanging gases, we're exchanging nutrients, we're exchanging metabolic waste products. And you can see that capillary beds are porous and they, that means they have holes in them. And you can have different types of capillary beds and different sized pores, okay? So for example, you can have the sinusoidal capillary beds, and they are located in areas where you need mass exodus of fluids, proteins, cells. This can happen in the bone marrow, for example, they're sinusoidal. But at most of the tissues, they're just porous, holes that are so small that not even proteins or cells can leave them. Simply the fluids, the ions, the gases, and the waste products can go back and forth. So that means that capillaries are porous and they're the site of exchange. Then we move on the other side of the capillary bed where we have venules and then veins, okay? Venules gather all that blood that's just been exchanged at the capillary beds and they then put them into a vein or multiple veins, larger vessels that go back to the heart. And we know from there it goes to the lungs to get that oxygen. Now, venules and veins have a thinner wall than you'd find with the arteries and arterioles, but what you'll find is they can be larger in diameter, and what you'll find is because of their thin walls and their larger diameter, it means they can hold most of the blood. Most of the blood in the circulation is actually sitting in the venous system, which makes them capacitance vessels, okay? So what do we have now? So just to summarize, we have arteries, elastic tissue, compliant arterioles, smooth muscle, 
resistance. Capillaries, porous, exchange, venules and veins, thin walled, wider diameter, capacitance vessels holds most of the blood. So that's a quick run through of the blood vessels of the body.